just really quick, I want to explain to you that this video is kind of my first DIY video and I am showing you how I make these sliding glass door curtains. Um, just please bear with me, I can only get better as I do these. So let's just begin. Here is the kind of drop cloth that I got. This was from uh, Home Depot and it's an Everbuilt and it's just a painting or cleaning drop cloth. Um, I'm going to make this one whole curtain. Um, so I got a 9 by 12 so I can make sure I have enough in length and with the width for the way that I'm going to hang it. And right now I am just getting ready to uh, wash it for the first time because when you go, I'm going to dye it. So when you go to dye it, you have to wash everything so it gets any, I don't know, chemical that it might have on it or anything. Just strips it all off of there and everything. So that is what I'm getting ready to do at this point. And when I get this done, I will show you what I do when I go to dye it. Okay, for dyeing the canvas, this is what I am using. So, here we go. Alright, I got three bottles of the right dye, um, the liquid. I'm trying to get them kind of in an aqua color. They are going to come out more of a, like a sky blue color, I think. Um, I've tried putting a little bit of the green in with it, but it just makes the blue darker, if that makes any sense. Um, I do have a big long wooden uh, spoon, so we'll be using. I'll be using that to mix it around in. I also have just some old gloves that I don't use. I basically just use them for any of my crafting stuff. And then the other thing that I have is the canvas. And again, I'll show you. This is one that I haven't used yet. This is a uh, six by nine. And I found mine at Home Depot. Now this size, the smaller size, is um, I think it was $10.98, something like that. And I also got this one, which is the one I showed you that I will be showing you. Um, it's a 12, it's a 9 by 12, and I am making a covering for my sliding glass doors. I kind of want to make it a little heavy duty. That's why I did choose the canvas. Um, so that way in the winter time, you know, you can keep the heat in and the cold out more. And then in the summertime, keep the cool in and keep the heat out because the sun beams straight in our sliding glass doors. Now I will take you over and I will show you the uh, canvas. Okay, here's my canvas. I just have it sitting on the railing because right now I'm waiting on uh, my two pots to... Uh, I have boiling water in my pots, so I just have this just kind of all crumpled up laid there and I'll kind of try to demonstrate how I'm putting it in or whatever. Um, and I also, I do have my tote ready. It's right there. I am going to be putting in two big things of boiling hot water because you're supposed to use hot water. So that's just filled with regular water. And uh, it's not cold water, but it's not hot water either. So that's why I'm putting some boiling water in. And then I'll be adding my dye. And then I'll be adding some salt. And mixing that around really good and then adding the canvas. So I'll be back when my water is ready to be put in. Here's the first pan of boiling water going in. Hope this works. Here's the second pan. It does say to add a cup of salt, but I'm just going to add my whole jar of salt here. This is a pint jar. This is a larger project than what they show, so now I'm going to add in the dye.
and mix it around. Plus the blue on the bucket's not going to help either. Alright, well I think that's good enough. I'll leave that set there and I'll get my canvas. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of drop it in. Let it get wet as it's going down. And I do want this to sit in here for a while. They say 10 to 30 minutes. Um, because this is a like a tan color, I guess. A wheat color. And I'm only hoping that this is gonna work. Come and move it every little bit. So that it all kind of gets it evenly coated. And now we just wait. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky for me. I don't have nowhere to hang this up to be able to rinse it. So I am just going to. Keep moving it around so everything gets touched and gets in there and I'm going to leave it in here for about 30 minutes or if it looks like it might need to come out before that and um, I'll be back with you guys when I go to clean it. Okay guys, I apologize. I forgot to show you the things that you will need to put the grommets into the curtains. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Of course you're going to need scissors and you're going to need a pen. And the next thing is, is I bought these at Home Depot. I think they were like $6.97 or something. But um, you do get eight in a pack and it's just curtain grommets and they come in various colors and stuff um, these aren't like a hard plastic feel they almost have a velvety feel which I kind of like um, it does say no tool no tools required but of course you got to have your scissors to cut them open I got three packages of these and I used let me see there's one two three so there was 24 so that means I used 21 of them and uh, they do come with the little clear thing so you can put your uh, circle mark your circles out in them and then you can cut it out so yeah those are the grommets that I used um, I really like the grommets and I really like the look of the grommets but um, they were they are a pain in the butt to put in I think anyway the next thing that I did get was a rod um, I didn't have a rod because we had the uh, big vertical blinds up there so this is the brand it's a umbra and it's a drapery rod set and it was a 72 to 120 inch and um, yeah I was pretty happy with uh, this rod now I do already have it installed um, so I'll take you in for a closer look with that, but I paid $24.99 and this was purchased also at Tuesday morning. Um, so let me take you in and I'll show you 
a close up of that rod again. Here's a close up of the rod. Um, like I say later on, that it looks like a uh, like kind of like an old fashioned doorknob. Um, I really like it, and I think it's cute, and it's really nice and heavy duty. So yeah, that's what I put up. Okay, this part is where I am uh, putting in the rings, or the grommets as they call them, the curtain grommet. Um, I figured I would show you how to do, or how I am doing, a couple of them. Um, this is not a, something that I think I might even think of doing again. I thought about doing this with my living room curtains, but I think I'll go back to the traditional um, just sewing them. <laughs> this has been quite a treat. Um, it goes all the way down. I am one thing that is in a fail of mine is I want this to be one whole curtain. So I do have all of them in. I can't even remember how many I used. I think I used 22 of the grommets. Um, so this was 127 inches wide and um, it has it has a four inch lip here that I pulled over and then I just centered a hole in between. Um, it does give you a uh, it's clear so it's going to be hard to see but it gives you a thing to trace and you just put it down and then you just trace it in the slots and then you cut your circle out and there are two pieces to the grommets there is this is kind of considered the back it has like prongs on it that grips the material and then this one is the uh, other one and it has like a ridge or a lip if you can see it has a lip and it goes underneath so I'm going to show you the last two um, some people say that these are simple um, they are kind of simple to do it's just the measuring and getting them spaced evenly you want to get them spaced from like this one to this one you want the even space so it just really takes a lot to get them measured out correctly and then like down here this one here will be on the end and all the different videos that I watched you, they say that you want anywhere from a two to a three inch gap on the end so I think I have a three inch gap and it's just it's a lot of measuring and trying to get them as precise as possible so I will set this down and I will show you how to put them in or I shouldn't say how to put them in this is how I am putting them in so I will be right back and we'll get started Okay, I got the circle cut out, you can see there. Um, now you take the one that has the ridge or the lip on the inside and you put it underneath on the bottom. And because this is the canvas uh, drop cloth, you do get a little bit of the shred or whatever. And that's okay because what I've been doing is I've just been making sure to tuck my edges down into it. And this here. I just make sure that I tuck all my edges down in there and you want to make sure that you get you know both pieces of your material both the front and the back and once I get this all shoved down in there it's kind of hard to do to be able to see with the angle of the camera but you just get this all tucked down in there because you don't want nothing sticking out so that it'll come in between the two pieces when they get together and then it just looks like that 
and then you take your one that has the little grippies on it and you just stick it down on there and I just push really hard and you'll hear that snap and that's all there is to it as far as this this is the easy part um, the complicated part about it is just getting it measured so that it's all spaced evenly and it would probably be better if you just did it on one panel and not like probably four this probably consists of about four panels so but this is going for the sliding glass door and so that's all right with me so I'll show you the last one in uh, fast speed and we'll go on from there Alrighty guys, that is all of my grommets. I have them all put in, as you can see, all the way down there. And now I just get to clean up my mess and I will be back. I'm going to install the uh, um, curtain rod. I will show you all the stuff that I have gotten for this project and I will take you over and show you what I am replacing. Okay, this is the sliding glass door. As you can see up at the top, um, we just have the vertical blinds and uh, I can't stand them. I am ready to get rid of them. So next I'll be installing the uh, rod that I bought to go across and from there we will get them hung up and that will be the end of this curtain making for sliding glass doors. Okay, here they are installed. Um, oh, these things are temperamental, I think anyway. Um, but they did turn out pretty decent. I have them all the way put up and you can see that they go all the way to the floor. I don't care so much for the seam in the middle. I was going to turn them the other way so the seam was going down but eventually I think I might paint a few stripes across the center of them and at the bottom and maybe at the top but for right now I am going to call it good for the curtains and they turned out good. I didn't get a chance to show you the rod that's the rod on the end. It's like a, it looks kind of like an old time doorknob, um, which I liked because I have kind of like a country farm style kitchen. So those went well. So it all turned out good. I'm happy with it. They slide open really well. And I have them to where they only slide to the middle to close. Um, so yeah, and that's what it'll look like. So yeah, turned out good. So that is the end of that project. Thanks guys. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.